We have often talked of the tipping point, the moment when sufficient numbers of humanity presently incarnate on Earth would start effectively swinging the attitudinal balance away from conflict and distrust and towards love so that your awakening could occur. Previously we have suggested that that moment was very close. Well now it is so close that you can reach out and make it happen. Despite the chaos and confusion worldwide with massive corruption apparent in the seats of worldly power, and with betrayals occurring in many areas leading to an increase in the seeming need to stop trusting one another, particularly on the political front, and the ongoing totally unnecessary wars, all is in fact perfectly on the divine schedule for humanity's imminent awakening. What is happening now is the opening up to general view of humanity's collective buried and denied shadow side for all to see, accept, and integrate. And for humanity that is shocking. A very large number of you were either unaware of the vastness of this shadow or blamed it, that is projected it onto other people, cultures, ethnic groups, and nations, for the suffering in the world. It was the denial of this aspect, the unwillingness to look at it and love it that has, over the eons, led to so much suffering for so many. As modern psychology has come to understand, largely as a result of the work done by Carl Gustav Jung, the shadow side has to be acknowledged and accepted in order for it to be integrated into the wholeness of either an individual or humanity at large, which it must be to enable sanity to rule. It is humanity's largely unacknowledged or denied shadow side, which is often its most creative aspect when fully integrated, that has made it so difficult for humanity to evolve spiritually. When you are in denial, enormous amounts of energy are expended in hiding from yourselves aspects that you fear are evil, destructive, or just unacceptable. But every aspect of a human has a divine purpose, an intent to assist the soul to evolve or move forwards along the spiritual path that it has chosen to follow in advance of its actual incarnation. Consequently every aspect of an individual has to be acknowledged and lovingly integrated into the whole before awakening can occur. However, most of your cultural, social, and religious organizations and the beliefs to which they cling, have, over the eons, engaged very heavily in judgment of personal behaviors in order to establish what they see as an acceptable form to which all of their members must conform so that they, the elite or aristocracy, can control you and use you to implement their own hidden agendas. They have in fact attempted to crush your divinely given creative talents by setting very narrow standards of behavior to which you had to conform if you were to be accepted by the society into which you were born. You were born free because you were created free by God, but that has not seemed to be the case as you have struggled to fit into social, religious, or cultural systems that were established within the illusion to make separation seem real. Being apparently separate, in a strange and threatening environment, it makes sense to attempt to conform to the norms of the society in which you find yourselves, especially as children when you are dependent on others for the basic necessities of human life. As has been explained, God has only one son, and that son was, at the moment of his creation, given all that God possesses. That one son then chose to experience separation from God, the divine source of love in which all of creation is lovingly held and embraced without break or interruption for all eternity. Separation from God is impossible, but the son's God-given power enabled him to build an illusory environment that appeared extremely real to all the individuals, both male and female, into which he split himself in order to experience that dream of separation. And separation by its very nature sets one against another in an endless search for what has been apparently lost, love. The separated state that humans experience, if really acknowledged and looked at, is quite terrifying. You were created one with God as his only son, or her only daughter if you prefer, to enjoy for all eternity an ecstatic existence in his loving embrace. There is nowhere else that sentient consciousness could exist because it is an inseparable part of God, forever at one with Him. But the illusion was constructed, and, for those experiencing existence within it, it seems absolutely real. And separation from your source is a terrifying thought because separated from it there is no life. Your real and unchangeable nature is as one with God, and you have faint memories of that state, of infinite love embracing you 
honoring you, respecting you, utterly accepting you, always, for all eternity. Consequently by comparison, although there is no meaningful comparison here, the illusion, the world in which you experience life as humans, is severely lacking in every respect. It is no wonder, therefore, that you have this underlying sense of terror, because reality has seemingly been lost and been replaced with a very unsafe environment in which your life lasts for only a very brief period of time and is then followed by permanent extinction. To be created into and for eternal life and then have that life reduced to a moment or two is an absolutely terrifying concept. And how could it not be? You were given everything, then the illusion seemingly took it all from you, leaving you alone, abandoned, and with only death to look forward to. You had moved, it would appear, from a state of infinite love and eternal joy to inevitable extinction. At the precise moment that the apparent separation occurred, your loving father instantly provided the way out of the illusion, salvation. The illusion is a place of confusion and chaos a prison in which you regularly experience solitary confinement, a feeling of intense loneliness. Because it is unreal, just a veil or cloak that seems to separate you from God, memories of reality seep through it to remind you that there is somewhere of intense wonder and beauty where you truly belong, and those memories are your salvation. Those memories are now being felt and remembered by increasing numbers of you, leading you to seek the way out of the confining prison that is the illusion. Over the eons many holy ones, and indeed you are all holy ones, have visited you and told you the truth about your situation and shown you the way home, but the familiarity of the illusion, despite the suffering and sense of abandonment it provides, appears to offer you some safety, while to move out of it into a space that is unfamiliar appears to be a very dangerous step to take, and so you cling to the illusion in the vain hope that things will improve. They will not and vast numbers of you are at last realizing this, realizing that constant chaos and confusion is all that the illusion can ever provide. You are discovering that in fact all are one, and that the way out, the way to dissolve it and return home to reality by awakening, is to practice loving one another without exception in every moment, as so many wise and loving teachers have demonstrated to you throughout the ages. Many of you are now doing this and your loving intentions and activities have brought the moment of your awakening tantalizingly close. Keep on renewing those loving intentions whenever you think about them during the day and make it happen. With so very much love, 